week is draft week. Everybody's happy. Or are we happy or are we tired? <laughs> it's hard to figure it out, man. I, uh, I got to say, uh, there's a lot of cool things about this draft stuff. A lot of cool things, but there's a oversaturation thing happening this year. More than any other year in history. It's a historic year, everybody, and we are ready. Welcome to Draft Week. This is Green Beans Jets Pod, episode 158. And I am Green Bean. I am happy to see you today, as we do on Monday mornings. We're going to talk about the New York Jets, some of the things going on around here, and some of the things that we hope might happen in the draft and coming in the 2024 NFL season. It's uh, it's looking like uh, we got reason to hope again. Yoo-hoo! It's time to hope. <laughs> I'll tell you, man. Uh, Matt O'Leary, my good friend, uh, put a tweet out last week. Just, I mean, it said everything. It was the clip of uh, Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball to Brees Hall, I think it was, in, uh, in, in practice or whatever they call it, you know, the team facility. And he just put, yep, I'm ready to get hurt again. And I just think that's gorgeous, stunning, brilliant, if I will. Sometimes, like me, I, you know, I can be wordy. Sometimes you don't need as many words, man. Just say, boop, and it says it all. You know what I mean? That's Matt O'Leary for you. So, guys, welcome to the show. I will say, before we get started, if you would be so kind, smash me those there milk thumbs which is the like button for those who don't know. It is greatly appreciated. And if you could spend another quick quarter second clicking that subscribe button, boy, oh boy, would I be happy. So thank you for all the support. It's fantastic. I'll also mention my favorite group of Jets fans on the planet, the Bean Baggers. Hello, guys. Good to see you as you know I feel. It's always good to see you guys. Uh, if you want to join the Beanbaggers, hang out with us. We get together every Wednesday night, get early releases, and more stuff coming this season. I have some really cool plans for extra content for the Beanbaggers. If you'd like to join the club of the coolest group of Jets fans out there, the link is in the description, and it helps support the channel, and for which I am incredibly and eternally grateful. It helps, man. It helps. You know, you want me to have these green lights and shit? How am I supposed to do that? <laughs> thanks to all who've been around i love you guys man it's so cool and i'm excited i have to admit in just three days time from when i'm recording this i will be driving up that damn 95 and all that stuff through dc and then everything through baltimore to get to you guys in long island for our draft party the talking jets draft party is happening April 25th for the first round. The tickets are done. They are sold out. We are done. All kinds of cool stuff. But that doesn't mean that you can't be involved. Guys, we are now having our fifth straight year of the live stream of the draft. The Talking Jets live stream. Tons of guests. Tons of giveaways for the online crew as well. Tickets. Putters shirts, all kinds of fun stuff we're going to be giving away. And you can join us each day for the draft. We'll be live streaming on location from Long Island, the main event in Farmingdale. But we will also be live day two and day three as well, per usual. And I hope you guys will join us. It's going to be an absolute blast. And I just, I'm excited to go up there and meet so many of you guys. It's going to be great. Now that said, let's dive into, we have a few things to talk about today. The news, you know, we got a little bit of news. Let's do a short truncated news of the week. All right. So Zach Wilson, buddy. That's right. Our cute little buttercup is not at the Jets facility for our uh, initial welcome back party. He's not there. So what does that mean? He's been there every year since we've had him. So this is an indicator that what many people perceive as obvious, some people are just not seeing it. Uh, it doesn't look like Zach Wilson is going to be a part of the New York Jets this year. Uh, and there's reasons for both sides. You know, Woody opening his mouth saying things like, well, he's an asset and we're not going to trade him or we're not going to uh, just cut him unless he's traded, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, could lead some to believe that that's factual. I mean, I don't know. 
It seems to me like Zach Wilson's career as a New York Jet is done, and I think rightfully so. Whether or not you believe he's the next coming or you've been watching and using your eyeballs to come to the opposite conclusion, uh, the Zach Wilson thing is over and he's not at the facility. That brings up some new articles about trade landing spots and all this jazz. Here's the thing. It would have been nice to trade Zach Wilson already and get whatever you can get. If it's a sixth, if it's a seventh, if it's a 2028 you know, ninth, something, something for this guy. It would have been cool, but that doesn't mean that the, that, you know, the whole hope of a trade is over. The truth is, is that a draft day trade can happen. Guys hoping, you know, GMs that is hoping that certain players fall to them and then they don't. And they say, you know what? I'm willing to go and get uh, and trade. There's nobody on the board right now that I value more than Zach Wilson at the quarterback position. And maybe they're willing to throw a late round pick at you. That can happen. Or you hold out through through uh, the draft and everything into training camp and somebody goes down, which happens every single year. And then all of a sudden, Zach Wilson becomes uh, increasingly better looking. Just, you know, it's like it's like at the bar in my old days. You, you walk in the bar at 8 p.m. and you're looking around for somebody to hang out with later and you got all kinds of high standards. And then they're like, last call. And you didn't leave yet. And you're looking around. Your standards, they change. People get better looking real quick. You're like, you know what? That's not so bad. Three hours ago, you were and you're like, get out of here. Get out of here with your face of yours. And then at, you know, 148 in the, in the morning, you're like, hmm. You know what? On second thought, that's kind of how I see the Zach Wilson thing. I think that there will have to be some sort of monetary compensation understandings at play. Maybe that'll diminish the return. But I think through the draft and training camp, there are still options and opportunity for Zach Wilson to be traded. And look, the truth is, is he's a young guy with oodles and oodles of physical talent uh, you know, hey, man, go and have yourself a career. You know, I'm not throwing any stones. I hate watching you under the center for the New York Jets. I'm done. Three years of the exact same offensive output. It's been unbelievably painful and um, frustrating to watch. Say your reasons all you want. doesn't matter. The proof is in the pudding. Whatever the reason, Zach Wilson's time here has been a, a field goal fest at best. And uh, it's time. It's time to move on. So I hope we get something for him. But that doesn't mean that we're going to, that I hate the guy. You know, go and have yourself, go learn under Mahomes and Andy Reid for a couple of years and, uh, and conjure yourself a second chance like Sammy Boy did. So let's see, you know, I'm all about that. And that is the news of the week. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you know, hey. What are you going to do? It's dry. It's dry out. There's all kinds of stuff. You know, Aaron Rodgers said the AIDS p pandemic or epidemic, whatever, was the government. That's fake. You know, all everybody bit on it. Because then the truth is not the biggest thing anymore. It's like, you know, it's like the Zach Wilson thing. You can look right at it with your eyes and go, dude, the guy's not doing so well. And then people go, no, but he's great. Nonetheless. Okay. Facts are weird these days. Well, it doesn't matter if, if a rumor is true. They write articles and they blast it out there. The controversial quarterback for the New York Jets claimed he's like, what? Controversial. The guy just, you know, he goes, takes a spiritual journey every offseason, has some opinions. Who cares? Controversial. What controversy has he caused? I don't even know anymore. But uh, hey, we're going to talk about it. So other than that, there's really nothing going on uh, out there for the New York Jets, except for the one thing we'll talk about in a few minutes with the intelligent gripe. But before we do that, I want to talk real quick. Let's throw another dart at this draft thing. You know, we're starting to settle into our, our grooves, if you will, as far as what we'd like to see happen with the draft. I have to say, I, this is an interesting year for me because while our opinions as Jets fans are known to be rigid, like we can be, you know, entrenched in our opinions and we argue all year. It's what we like to do. We're, you know, arguing is not always a negative thing. It's like busting your friend's chops. Hey, fatty, you, know, you do that kind of stuff. It's with love. You know, I think that's somewhat of what we are. We just like it. We like to argue with each other. And anyone else who's standing in, in the peripheral will argue with anybody about anything. Especially Taylor Ham, you know, but when it comes to the Jets, we like to do this. So we're arguing about our players. We get into our, 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 our stances, if you will. But for me, I have to admit, while I do have a preference, I would be totally okay with anything. 
offensively. Interior offensive line, maybe not at 10 because the value's not there, but all right. A tackle, absolutely. I'm game for it. Wide receiver, sure. Let's do it, man. Let's get A-Rod some serious elite level weapons. Brock Bowers, the tight end. Mm, I love tight ends. It's my favorite position on the whole field. Would I do it at 10? Probably not. But if the Jets do, I'm going to be excited about it because the guy is talented and exciting to add to the offense. So I'm in a weird place that's kind of confusing for me. I'm all right with a whole bunch. If they go defense, this rumor about defensive tackles, and oh my God, don't do it, Joe Douglas, you son of a gun. I'm telling you, last year we did it. It's enough. Enough playing games with this whole defensive thing. Now, the good news is Joe Douglas has actually been offensive tilted in the first round. First year, Becton. Second year, Zach Wilson, uh, AVT, right? First three first-round picks, offense. Not only that, in 2021, he also followed that with two more offensive picks, a wide receiver in the second and a running back in the fourth. Year three, he had three, well, he had two first round picks, split it down the middle. Sauce, defense at first at, at, at four, and then Garrett Wilson at 10, traded back up for Jermaine Johnson. So that's a little bit tilted, but it doesn't even even it out yet. You know, we still have four to two, four to two as far as defense or offensive versus defensive players taken in the first. And then last year he went defense. So it's kind of balanced, but it's still tilted toward the offense. Joe Douglas is not afraid to lean offense in the first round, which is different for Jets because by and large, we are a defensive-focused organization, especially recently. We were crying for offense for a very long time and just defensive tackle, defensive line, defensive tackle. That's just what we do for a long time. Safety, safety. Say It's like we're kind of nuts. So Joe Douglas, at least I have hope that he can kind of overcome this sneaky desire as the Jets organization and just go, you know what? I can't pass this defensive guy. The hell is that all about? And take offense, right? I think uh, that gives me hope. So let's take another stab at this thing. This is leaning toward what I really want. This is an offensive tilted mock. I'll admit, but look at how much damage you can do with this one here. So again, I'm a big, big fan. One of the things I'm really hoping for is a trade back of some sort. I think the Raiders are perfect unless they proceed the 10th pick with their trade up. I think that they are looking to do just that. I think they want a quarterback, whether JJ McCarthy or Penix or one of these guys, I think that they're going to want to jump the Denver Broncos and take their guy. I just think that's it makes a lot of sense. Now, obviously, there's no guarantee that that'll happen, but I think it's a good bet. So the Raiders are my target. Now, the value on the chart, people are going to go blah, blah, blah. The chart is only a guideline. Positional value supersedes chart value every day of the week. If they're coming up for a quarterback and you just tell them, hey, I got the Rams and the Broncos on the phone too, uh, getting a second's not going to be that hard. So I like the idea of squeezing them for pick 44. We do that, and it changes the whole dynamic and trajectory of what we're attempting to accomplish. We're getting an elite-level weapon in the second if we want it. It's just that simple if we trade back and get that second-round pick. So once that's established, I'm tackle all day, every day up top. But Troy Fatanu is especially interesting for me because he's a damn good left tackle, but he also can play right tackle, and he can also play both guard spots. Boy, oh, boy. It's like getting a value pack. You know what I mean? Like, why buy the one when the value pack's at the same price? I'm going to take the value pack every day of the week. So Troy Fatanu coming in at 13 makes a bunch of sense for me. Sliding down to uh, 44. Now, the mock itself had guys that I just don't see sliding out of the first or the first few picks of the second, so I left them off the board. Uh, guys like McConkey and some others. I just, there's no, In my opinion, there's just no way. So I took my, a realistic option there, and I, I really love Ricky Pearsall. The truth is, I think Ricky Pearsall can give you a lot of what you're hoping 
the Romo Dunzes and the Brock Bowers of the world. Not everything, but I think he can come in. You get Troy Fatano and Pearsall instead of taking Brock Bowers or Odunze. I'm doing that. So I think Ricky Pearsall as wide receiver three is a fantastic option. I love him. Lots of players I like there, but I took Ricky Pearsall. And then guess what I did? I went and got myself an upgrade over Xavier Gibson and Malik Washington. Think about that. You bring in Troy Fatanu to back up every friggin' position on the O-line, essentially. And you get Ricky Pearsall and Malik Washington to shore up that offense. Come on now. Are you going to complain about that? S- just jam Malik into the, that damn slot. Th- and it changes everything. Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams, Ricky Pearsall, Malik Washington running around with Brees Hall and Conklin and all the guys, all the packages. I love it. Followed that with the backup for, for Brees. Braylon Allen, I'm tired of the idea of using Brees in short yardage situations. I want Brees to last as long as he possibly can under the New York Jets banner. So I'm taking Braylon Allen. I know people are tired of it, uh, of that name, but it's the guy I want. He's my RB1 for the Jets. And what we could use, he's a bruiser that can break it. He's going to get you the yard. He's going to get you the two yards more times than not, especially with the offensive line uh, that we've conjured up if everybody stays healthy. Love it. I, uh, I'm i grabbing Jordan Travis if he's there with my second, fourth-round pick. Uh, I love the idea. I love the talent. The value there is undeniable, in my opinion. And then I just couldn't do it. I, I, I had to grab myself a safety. I love James William. James Williams out of the U down there in Miami. Love him. I think that the fact that he's still there, which I'm, it's rumored that he's going to make it slide back that far. I think he's a slam dunk and I would love to see it happen. Followed it with a center interior offensive lineman, Kingsley Agakwan. I love that player. He's one of my like sleepers, if you will. And get, if he's there for Mr. Irrelevant, I'm going to do that all day. So this is the type of draft I'm really leaning toward. Get that trade back. Squeeze the, the, the second out of the Raiders. And then you can go offensive line weapon. The good news with that one is if you did choose to take the weapon up top, let's say Odunze, which he's not, but let's say he slides there or Bowers is still there at 13, Bowers. Uh, you could take Brian Thomas, you could take A.D. Mitchell, any of those guys. If you chose to do that, I'm still okay with the types of tackles that would be there at pick 44 as well. So you could do that. It's a little bit less flashy, flashy in my opinion. I'd prefer it the other way. I think the wide receivers are stronger, but you could justify it in my opinion. So there you go. So there's a little mock for you. How you like it? I am retired of these friggin' mocks. I'm uh, I'm gonna do about fifty six more for you uh, between now and the draft. So we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll really make sure we hate it. So we're gonna like, turn the mocks off. So we'll do that. And we have a big mock, the final Monday night mock tonight at ten p.m. When you're watching this, Monday night ten p.m. right here on Green Bean Jets fan. Me and Dom C are gonna wrap up this Monday night mock season. With our, our last episode, man, it's sad. We'll play some sad music for you. Uh, but yeah, I hope you'll join us. It's, it's the final, the finale. Yeah, let's do that. 10 p.m. tonight. But uh, yeah, then mock season will be over, man. Whoo-wee, am I ready for it? So let's do this. Let's talk about the biggest thing in this week's Intelligent Gripe. <laughs> So here we go. We got Sauce Gardner out there with some really big news, man, if it's true. If this holds, this comment of his, if it holds, man, it's kind of what we've been asking for. Now, look, the Jets' defense is working, right? Last year, they were third in overall yards, second in passing yards. So it's, you know, I mean, we're not going to complain. But, man... Looking at one game, let's just pick one example. The Dallas game where CeeDee Lamb just seemed to be open all day. We were screaming, why isn't Sauce just locking this guy up? Which you know he would. Now, not to say CeeDee Lamb wouldn't have some catches. CeeDee Lamb's a stud. At the same time, he's just running free all over the defense in our zone. And uh, we're screaming at the TV or wherever if you were there. I'm sure you were screaming it too. Why isn't just take sauce and shut this down already? 
we're hearing now that Saw said he's going to be doing some traveling this year. And you know what that means? That means that there will be times that Sauce Gardner is just glued to their top receiver on the offense to make sure that that guy is taken out of the game as best we can with our best player in the defensive backfield. Hands down, love DJ Reed, love Michael Carter II. They're not Sauce Gardner. And Sauce Gardner is going to be really kind of pinned to their best wide receiver. What is that reminiscent of? Well, it's reminiscent of the role that one Darrell Revis had for us. Now Hall of Fame inductee, Darrell Revis, right? We know this. He, he was placed in the Hall of Fame last year uh, for all Jets fans to behold alongside another great Joe Klecko. And we had such a good time. He got in there because he shut down some of the best receivers in the game on a consistent basis. Now, the cream of his entire career is the 2009 NFL season. So let's take a look at that just as a quick rehashing of what that all looked like for us and how much fun it really was. So here we go. So this year... In 2009, which I watched proudly with the South Florida Jets fan club, that's where I watched all my games except for the Miami game that I went to uh, live that year. I would go to most Miami Jets games down there when I lived in the Miami area for about 16 years. I went to most of the Jets games that were down there. But I was hanging out with the South Florida Jets fan club down there in, uh, what is it, what's the place called again? Um, oh man, I forget. Hammerjacks. Right, Hammerjacks down there. What is? Uh, I think it's in Davie or Cooper City, Florida. Get 100 or 200 Jets fans down there. It was a great place. If you're in the area looking for a club, I can highly recommend that. That club, good people, good times. But man, this season was special. Darrell Revis, he only allowed over 50 yards two times. And one of those games was against Lewis Murphy for the Raiders. And it was a game that the Jets won 38 to nothing. So it's kind of one of those games you just, you can see somebody just going, ah, whatever, like garbage time, you're playing back kind of a thing. That was also the game. You remember this coolest interception, I think, outside of the playoff interception against Vincent Smith, where it bounced all over Revis' body and everything. Coolest interception I've seen when the, it was going to be a touchdown. Jamarcus Russell, Zach Wilson won. <laughs> the first Zach Wilson. Just tossed it in the end zone, and Darrell Revis just jumped over the... So it was uh, the receiver was like this, and Revis came over top of the receiver and just plucked it out of, it, out of the air. Gorgeous. I remember it like it's yesterday in the blue Titans jerseys. Remember that? Great, 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 great fun interception to watch. And just one of those moments, man, when you realize, you know, you're, you, that you're watching greatness, you know, that kind of a thing. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, look at the names he shut down. Andre Johnson, four catches, 35 yards. Randy Moss, the first time, four catches, 24 yards. Uh, Justin Gage, four catches, 37 yards. Marquise Colson, these are studs, man. Two catches, 33 yards. Ted Ginn, 57 yards. That was really, most of it was on one catch, which was a 53-yard touchdown. So, well, hey, you know, I, I didn't think it happened to anybody, right? It happens. Ted Jim was fast, man. Remember that guy? Fast. So he had two catches for 57 yards. Again, 53 of them came on one catch. Uh, Terrell Owens, three catches for 13 yards. Remember, Revis used to abuse Terrell Owens, man. He liked it. It's like, you think you're big and tough? I'm going to shove you around and knock you down. He did that stuff all the time. There's the Lewis Murphy game, four catches, 58 yards. And there's that pick. Uh, De Devon Devon. Bess, four catches, 18 yards. Mike Sims Walker uh, for the Jags, three catches, 49 yards. There's Moss again, five catches for 34 four yards. Steve Smith, one catch for five yards. He held the great Steve Smith. One of my favorite receivers, non-jet, that is. I love the way Steve Smith played. One catch for five yards. There's Terrell Owens again, three catches for 31. Antonio Bryant, two for 22. Roddy White, the big man before uh, Julio Jones, right? Everybody thought they were crazy for trading up for Julio Jones when they had Roddy White. Roddy White had a massive two catches for 16 yards. There's Reggie Wayne, 
Three catches for 35, and then he blanked Ocho Cinco. And then in the playoffs the week after, did it again. We played the Bengals two weeks in a row, if you remember. Uh, that was the final game at Giants Stadium, I, I believe, the the uh, the first one. Non-playoff, because the Jets never have home playoff games. But that was the final game in Giants Stadium, wasn't it? Wasn't that it? I think that was it. A blowout. Beat the living shit out of them. Uh, I think that's how it went. But uh, yeah, so look at that. So let me ask you guys a question. Is there the potential? We have a kid, Sauce Gardner, who is just one. Just I love him on so many levels. Not only the play, but how he holds himself. You know, how he acts around. He's just a a good guy to have around the team. Hard working, believes in himself. Just I just love Sauce Gardner on so many levels. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Two-time All-Pro, two-time Pro Bowler in his first couple of seasons. I mean, come on. Now he's going to be in the Revis role, if this holds true. Is there the potential? I want you to answer this question in the comments, if you'd be so kind. I'm really genuinely curious. Is this the guy that can match and or surpass the greatest season by a cornerback in NFL history. Right there, the 2009 Darrell Revis season. Can Sauce Gardner match that season? If we're putting him all over the field on the best receivers the offense can throw out there to make sure that that's not the guy. DJ Reed and Michael Carter will handle two and three. No problem. No problem. Can Sauce Gardner blanket and blank their best wide receiver that the opposing offense has to throw at us? I got to say, if there's any defensive back that the Jets have had that I think could do that, it is Sauce Gardner. He's going, he's a young guy, man. This guy's only going into his third year. His third year. He's a two time All Pro, rookie of the year, two time Pro Bowler. And here we are moving him into a situation where he can have even more impact than he's had. Because you know they'll try to scheme scheme the guy away from him. Of course they will. Can he do it? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'm sincerely curious. I think he can do it. As a matter of fact, when we have an offense to actually throw out there and take some of the pressure off of the defense, I think, like, think about this. How many extra drives with all the fumbles and picks and all the stuff that we see thrown out there? Or just three and outs. Up and three down. The defense gets you a pick, gets you the ball back at the 50-yard line. Up and three down and three. Punt it back. How many times have we seen that the past two years from this offense? Throwing Aaron Rodgers out there. Protect him. Which is why I like offensive line in the first. That's key. It's, It's job one, dude. Yes, he needs weapons, but wide receivers and tight ends running around while he's sitting on his ass, laying on his back, there's nothing. You got him. Job one is A-Rod needs to be standing up. That's the, that's the key. And not running for his life. He needs to be upright, scanning the field, and picking and choosing where he's going to throw that damn rock. If we can do that, then the weapons come into play. So that's why I like the offensive line thing. But man, if you can alleviate those extra drives that our defense has to be out there, you're talking about Sauce Gardner shadowing their best wide receiver. I don't see why not. I think it's I think it's a realistic opportunity for us to see one of the greatest seasons from a cornerback again. Can he do it? I don't know. I think I think it's I'm telling you, I feel positive. Now I'm drinking all sorts of Kool-Aid this year. Ah, Setting me up. I know it. I know, but I believe. I'm choosing to believe again. I don't know if it's even a choice anymore. I really don't. I think it's just a broken record. I don't know. Broken clock. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm deranged. I don't know what it is, but I'm believing. And I'm not only believing the Jets are going to be good, get a home playoff game, all that sort of stuff, take the AFC East. I also believe we're going to see the greatest season from a cornerback in NFL history surpassed by a Jets player. Oh, my God. I'm deep. 
I'm in here deep, everybody. But that's what, hey, that's what it looks like to me. And that is our show. So, guys, I will see you tonight for the 10 o'clock mock. And I will see you on Thursday for the first round of the NFL draft. Jets are holding pick 10. Let's see what they do. They're going to trade up. They're going to trade back. They're going to take a tackle. They're going to take a weapon. They're going to take a tight end. Who knows? It's going to be the best. I can't wait for all. I'm here for it. I'm here for all of it. With that all said, don't forget to hit the like button on your way out, guys. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you next time. Have a great week, everybody. And as always, go Jets.